Okay, welcome to EGR 550 Mechatronic Systems. Uh, in today's class, we are going to talk about uh, the, the control systems and then we will look at uh, what are the different techniques and tools that are available to us when we design control systems. So we have gone through all the important parts and components of the control systems. Now in today's class, what I want to do is, I want to start off with what we started discussing in the last class, that is something called as the root locus. Now in last class, I gave this example, like what are the applications of root locus. And please understand that root locus is a technique that allows us to find out how much gain can be increased before the system becomes unstable. And I explained this example in last class that say you have a microphone here and here is the speaker so the per and then what we have very close to microphone there are these loudspeakers so basically whatever speaker talks into the microphone those sounds get amplified and directed to the audience now for some reason and if you look at the internals of this, there is amplifier and that amplifier maybe has a knob or a gain. Now, even though this speaker is pointed towards the audience, there is always a possibility that some of these sounds can leak and go back. Now, we don't want these leaking sounds to be heard by the microphone. But what happens is, if we increase the gate very high, then what would happen is the intensity of the sound coming out of microphone will be so high that basically uh, the speaker would excite the microphone. And as soon as something like this happens, please understand it's a vicious circle because then the system would become unstable. So the idea is we want to find out how much gain can realistically be increased before the system becomes unstable. And that is the purpose of the root locus. Now, if you look at the fundamental principle, we talked about transfer function. Transfer function has a numerator and transfer function has a denominator. The system would become unstable for certain value of S if denominator becomes zero, which means the system response would become infinite. So now the question that we need to address is what is the value of the gain that makes this system unstable? And for that, what we are going to do is we are going to use this technique, which is called as the root locus. Now, locus is the path. So what it means is we want to look at the poles of the transfer function. We want to look at the poles of the transfer function and how do these poles vary? How do these poles vary if we increase the gain?
and this gain is nothing but k and remember that these poles in frequency domain or eigen values in time domain they are in general complex they have a real part and they have an imaginary part so what we want to do is say initially if the gain is zero or the gain is very small then let's say that our poles are over here now as we increase the gain the closed loop transfer function changes as the closed loop transfer function changes then what happens is these poles they start traveling and depending upon the way the transfer function is the poles may travel something like this or the poles could in certain cases travel like this but as soon as these poles cross this imaginary axis the system would become unstable so as soon as the poles cross the imaginary axis the system becomes unstable so what we want to do is we want to find out how do these poles travel as the gain is changed and this technique was used a lot uh in a linear system control system design because typically analog devices or analog circuits would have gains amplifiers and we as engineers we needed to know what are the bounds on the system so if you look at the way the root locus is uh, drawn in 1960s 70s and 80s the engineers came up with some thumb rules that would allow us to draw the root locus without actually doing any calculation so what that means is if if i want to find out the root locus what is the process so the process is on x axis there will be gain okay on y axis there will be the location of pole so the value of the pole say initially your pole is here then pole is here then pole is here and what i have i have to do is this pole needs to be plotted on to real and imaginary axis and track it so instead of performing this mathematical calculation in every iteration by looking at the denominator of the transfer function you can come up with some rules that would allow you to sketch the root locus approximately and what's what was the advantage of this root locus calculation you don't you don't need uh, computers so basically you look at the equation and then you sketch the root locus nowadays a uh, root locus by hand is usually not preferred what we do is we use the the systems like matlab to plot the root locus and plotting a root locus with matlab is super simple but it is instructive to kind of quickly review the rules that are used to plot root locus and once again one thing i just want to tell you is uh, let me quickly talk about the the principles that are used when we look at the stability using root locus now root locus i just have to be super careful here can be used root locus can be used to study the stability it can also be used to design controllers 
and I will take examples and I'm going to use MATLAB and then that actually will show you how root locus can be used to design the controller or to study the stability. But before I begin, let me start with the system that we are looking at. So I have this open loop system. This open loop system has the open loop transfer function g of s. Now I'm going to make it a closed loop system. So if I were to make it a closed loop system, what I need to do is I need to add a summing junction and I'm going to add a unity feedback or I can actually add maybe uh, some feedback transfer function. So GS is the transfer function of the open loop system. HS is the transfer function of the, the feedback loop. And once I have this, I can write down something called as the closed loop transfer function. And this closed loop transfer function is given as GS divided by one plus GS HS. So this is the closed loop transfer function. Now, if I want to study the poles or how the poles change, what I do is I look at the denominator of this closed loop transfer function. So what I do is I look at one plus GS HS. And when this becomes zero, the system becomes unstable. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a gain parameter here. So let's see what would happen if I add a gain parameter here, gain k. So if I add a gain parameter, my closed loop transfer function loop transfer function with gain would now change to k times gs divided by 1 plus k gs h of s. And clearly, the, the denominator is changed. And now this denominator 1 plus k gs hs is equal to 0 is dependent upon the value of the gain. So now all of a sudden, it becomes dependent on this unknown So what I'm going to do is, in the root locus, I'm going to find out how my closed loop poles travel as I change this value of the gain k. So if you don't use MATLAB, then these are the rules that can be used to plot the root locus. And these root locus, this root locus can be just plotted by looking at the transfer function. So what we do is the first rule is how many branches does the root locus have? Root locus should have n branches and they start at n poles of the loop transfer function. Now, there is something important that I want you to think about. Loop transfer function is different 
than the closed loop transfer function. So what you have is you have something called as the loop transfer function and loop transfer function is basically uh, if you have a unity feedback, what you are going to get is you are going to get one plus G of S that is called as the loop transfer function. So what you do is number of branches is equal to the number of poles of the loop transfer functions. Out of these M branches, basically they terminate at the zeros or the numerator uh, where the numerator of this transfer function becomes zero. They start, uh, they, they terminate over there and the remaining branches go to infinity. And these lines are called asymptotes. Rule number two is you have to look at the magnitude and phase. And there are two conditions. One is the condition for the magnitude and other is the condition for the phase. Then the third rule is related to the real axis. So if you were to look at any point on the real axis, if the number of poles minus number of zeros of GH is on the right hand side of the point that is odd, the point would lie on the root locus. And this rule may seem like a complex rule, but trust me, once you work out root lo locuses for many systems, this would actually come natural. But in this class, and even if you go to industry, nowadays, very rarely people would draw root locus by hand. What they would do is they would use MATLAB and they would plot root locus. And the next rule is you want to find out the angles of the asymptotes. And again, this is the condition for theta. So you substitute the values and then get uh, the angles. Then again, there is rule number five. And some of these rules are actually a little bit common sense rules, but the first four rules are actually quite important. The next rule is related to the break-in points and breakaway point. Next, the rule after that is the intersection with imaginary axis, then the angle of approach and departure, and intersection of asymptotes. Now, when I was an undergraduate student and when I studied uh, root locus, we did not have access to MATLAB. So believe you me, I ha we had to remember all these rules and practice drawing root locus by hand. But once MATLAB started dominating the field of computing, uh, our lives become very simple. And these are the steps that you would use if you don't have access to MATLAB. So you would start with step one, step two, step three, step four, all the way to step eight. And you're welcome to try these steps, but here is an easy way out. So what we are gonna do today is I'm going to solve these root locus problems using MATLAB. So let's take an example that we want to solve this problem as the root locus. Now, I, I need to be very clear. The way MATLAB does it, the way MATLAB does it is this G of S. This G of S is the open loop transfer function. This is something that you should keep in mind. So even though root locus is telling us that how the roots of the closed loop transfer function travel as the gain is changed, but the way we solve it in MATLAB is we have to work with the open loop transfer function. 
GFS is the open loop transfer function. So what you do is, if you look at this open loop transfer function as an example, example D, first we have to expand this. So this is going to become 10 S plus 20. And in the denominator, I'm gonna have S square plus two S plus two. Same thing, if I want to do this, I need to expand this and I'm gonna have one divided by S square plus two S plus zero. Same thing over here. Uh, if I want to expand this, this is gonna look like 10 times S plus 20 divided by, I need to perform this multiplication. So this is gonna be S cube plus two S square plus 17 S plus five S square plus 10 S plus 85. So I want to expand all these transfer functions. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go on to MATLAB and show you how to draw these root locus. So bear with me, uh, this time I'm gonna switch to MATLAB. And uh, let me share my screen. Okay, online students, can you see my MATLAB screen? So let's take an example that we want to draw the root locus, new script. And I'm gonna start with something like this. So the system that we are going to solve, so let me say num1 is equal to 10 comma 20. Then one is equal to one comma two comma two. Now I need to do transfer function. I'm gonna say TF one is equal to TF, TF stands for transfer function, num one, then one. And then we are gonna use three different techniques. So I'm gonna do this one by one. So first one is locus, R locus. And I'm gonna say TF4. So highlight this, run this. Oh, TF1, sorry, TF1, you're right, TF1. TF1. So once you do this, it will plot the root locus. So this, now one thing, uh, let me share my screen with uh, the online students. So this excess, they are the poles and this uh, O's are the zeros. Now, the way the it actually is showing is it's showing how these poles travel on the, the S plane. Now S means uh, the plane where you plot the poles, which has a real axis and an imaginary axis. So they, we want to see how these poles travel 
on this S plane. Everyone got this root locus? I'll just show you the, the command quickly. This is how you would get the, the root locus. The next part. is if we were to use the other tool that MATLAB has, which is called CISO tool, which is single input, single output tool. And I say TF1. So, it will open a single input, single output analysis tool. Now I want you to see that the root locus that we plotted a minute ago is on the right hand side. Are you with me? That is the same root locus that we plotted. Now, what I want to, you to understand and quickly check is these locations, these locations, the, these basically are the pole locations. So I want you to kind of see that as you change uh, the parameters, the poles kind of travel. So, and actually this, uh, bear with me for a second. So what I want to do is, uh, this is very important. So please pay attention. I, I want you to uh, just let me take this all the way, all the way over here. Drag this over here. Okay. Now, everyone, please click on C. Can you see that this is the tunable block name C and this is the sample time? Are you with me? So what is this C? This C is nothing but the value of the gain. Are you with me? So we are saying that this gain is tunable, which means maybe we have a knob that we turn and the value of gain increases. Initially, this value of this gain is zero. Are you with me? The value of the gain is zero. And when the gain is zero, as you can see that the, the closed loop poles are at the same place as the open loop transfer function poles. So which is like excess. As I increase the value of the gain, I want you to understand what's happening. This value is going to get increased. So if you drag this and then start traveling, can you see that value of C keeps on changing? Now you would notice that this value of C, so now the gain is 0 0.488 and the poles are over here. So which means if I increase the value of the gain to 0 0.48, my poles, which were earlier here, where the excess are, they travel on this locus. Now this CISO tool is interesting in a sense that it not only gives you the root locus, it also gives you the, the step response. 
So as you can see, the step response is shown over here. And I want you to understand as you increase the gain, what happens to the step response? So there is always a steady state error or a constant error that is uh, for the step response. So you will see, ideally our input is one. So our output, we want it to reach to one, but there is always some steady state error between the, the output and the input. So this is what it means by uh, root locus analysis. Now, in this particular case, there is something important that I want you to note. This dark vertical line, this is the imaginary axis. So please note, no matter what my gain is, whether my gain is zero, whether my gain is 100, or whatever the gain was, my poles are always on the left-hand side of the S-plane, which means the system is not becoming unstable. But in certain cases, for certain values of gains, the system could become unstable. And if you look at this control system, you can actually use this for lot other applications. So basically you can actually use the CISO tool for designing. You can generate, say for an example, if you want to generate a new plot, then you can actually add a body plot or an impulse plot or an aqueous plot, or you can do something called as the pole zero map. And then you will notice uh, if you say plot, it will show you the locations of the poles and the locations of the zeros. So please note, this is the pole, this is the pole, and this guy is the zero. If you want to see, uh, if you want to add one more plot, which is uh, impulse, so how does the system behave? with respect to impulse. And something I want to tell you here, that if you look at the way MATLAB has plotted this system, it's slightly different than the way we draw the transfer function. But at the end, it means the same. This is sort of a more generalized approach for the linear system analysis. So what that means, is please understand g is the transfer function g is the open loop transfer function h is the feedback transfer function c is the controller gain and basically r what you're seeing here uh, is coming as an input and this basically it's same express. This is slightly different way of expressing the same transfer function. But I want you to understand, just click on this plot and now you would see this is how the impulse response of the system would behave. This is how the pole zeros would behave. This is how the step input, uh, the system would behave if we were to provide that with a step input. Now, what I want to do is, I want to take uh, one more example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to MATLAB and I'm gonna add something like uh, maybe uh, num2 is equal to say one. Uh, actually, I would say one zero, then two is equal to uh, one, two, 
two and I would say TF two is equal to TF num two den two CISO tool TF two. So now I want you. So you got this transfer function s divided by which is given as uh, e and this is the how the transfer function looks like once again i want you to click on c c is the gain so as you can see here that when the value of c is zero when the value of c is zero the poles are over here and as the value of c increases as the value of c increases there comes a point that extremely high value of gain and this pole gets transferred onto the imaginary axis it doesn't cross but it gets transferred onto the imaginary axis so for some reason if there is a transfer function uh, where you increase the gain and the poles cross the imaginary axis then the system would become unstable so everyone okay and clear how to do the root locus using uh, MATLAB. Remember the rules that I talked about? Uh, if you don't have access to MATLAB, then the, those rules would be super helpful in constructing the root locus. But the root locus that you construct in that case is not an exact root locus, but it's sort of an approximate root locus. Now, let me share my screen. Okay. So if you look at these examples, A, B, C, D, E, F, these are the root locus uh, for each and uh, every problem just drawn by hand. So this is how uh, that root locus would look like. Next part, uh, and we talked about it in last class, uh, that how do we control? There is a bang bang control, there is a proportional control, and there is a derivative control uh, with proportional gain and integral gain. Now, how do we use root locus to design a controller problem? Now, so for example, this is the problem that we want to solve. And the problem here is something like this. So we have this DC motor. We have this DC motor. And this DC motor has maybe some control input. And then there is some type of an encoder. So you have some position feedback. So there's an encoder. Uh, and what I want to do is, I want to come up with this a controller algorithm. So basically this controller algorithm, which would take the data from the encoder, which would take the data from the encoder. So this would be the feedback. use this feedback 
and then come up with some type of a computer logic to adjust the speed of the motor. Or what I can do is I can control the pulse width that are actually supplied to the motor and then use that to control the, the location. Uh, maybe the position of the motor or if here, maybe there is a pointer that you want that pointer to go to certain point. Okay, so for this particular problem, if you look at this motor, this motor has the transfer function one divided by four S square plus S. This is the open loop transfer function for the motor. So this is the, if you look at this, this just this block is the open loop transfer function. But with the encoder, we added this feedback path. And this feedback is a unity feedback. Which means H of S is equal to one. Now, what I have here is I am going to supply some type of position command, like turn the motor to 10 degrees turn the motor to 20 degrees. So pointer would point toward 10 degrees, 20 degrees, whatever it is. This guy, this guy is nothing but a gain and a filter. A gain and the filter. 1 divided by 2s plus 1. So this is the gain and the filter. So now what type of filter is this? So this needs a little bit of discussion and I will try to address this because this is, an, this is a very practical control problem. And uh, the next lab I'm gonna assign would actually include some of this modeling. So I want you to understand what exactly is happening here. So, Imagine this transfer function. This transfer function is given as one divided by two S plus one. Now, what I'm gonna do is through this guy, say I'm going to supply a constant signal. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to supply a constant signal. So a constant, signal. Now my question to all of you is what is the frequency of constant signal? What is the frequency of constant signal? How would you plot constant signal? It's a DC signal, right? So you show it like this. So the frequency is zero. Do you agree with me? So if I have a constant signal, frequency is zero. In other words, my S value is zero. So if I supply S is equal to zero, what do I get? I get one divided by one. So what that means is whatever is my input, my input would equal to my output. Do you agree with me? Now, what that means is if my input is not changing, then the entire input would just pass through. Do you agree with me? If my input is not changing, that entire input would pass through. Now let's imagine that I have an input that is super fast changing. So it's something like this, very, very quickly changing. And I'm gonna give an example saying that my omega is very high. Just imagine for a sake, uh, sake for the sake of discussion, 
my omega is infinity. So if my omega is infinity, what is going to happen to this transfer function? My s would be infinity, which means this guy uh, is actually uh, going to be one divided by infinity. And that is nothing but zero. Do you agree with me? So if I increase my frequency, then my input, no matter what my input is, as long as that input is changing very quickly, my output is going to be zero. Do you agree with me? So do you agree with me that there may be a boundary? So something like this, what I'm going to show you here is, this is the frequency and this is the ratio of output divided by input. This is the ratio of the output divided by input. This is also called as magnification. Magnification. If my frequency is zero, if my frequency is zero, I get perfect uh, output my magnification is one as my frequency increases my magnification decreases and as it goes to infinity this would intersect with the x-axis are you with me so far so this filter what type of filter is it i give you an example there are three types of filters one is low pass, which means pass the signal, signal with low frequency. It means if the signal is slowly changing, then it will go through. There is high pass, which means pass the signal if they are changing very rapidly with high frequency. And then there is something called as band pass, which means you would pass the signals that are in this particular band of frequency. Are you with me so far? So you have a low pass filter, you have a high pass filter, and you have a band pass filter. What type of filter is this? This filter is low pass filter. Now, why is low pass filter used in this particular application? Because if you think about it, for this motor, what you have is you have this encoder. Encoders are very noisy, which means the output that comes from the encoder is fluctuating. Clearly, if we start manipulating our control input based on a noisy signal, our controller will be noisy. So what I want to do is I want to filter out that noise and to filter out that noise, I'm using this low pass filter that will actually attune the noise. Everyone with me so far? So now, what we need to do is, first, we need to sketch the root locus for the closed loop system, determine the value of gain when the closed loop system has two equal poles, determine the range of k for which closed loop system is stable, and finally, we have to find out the frequency at which the system would oscillate when it's marginally stable. 
So how do we solve this problem? Now there are two ways to solve this problem. The first way to solve this problem is we find out this loop transfer function. This loop transfer function is G times H. Loop transfer function. And then we find out the poles by equating the denominator is equal to zero. So as you can see, the characteristics equation is nothing but multiplication of s multiplied by 2s plus 1 multiplied by 4s plus 1. So if we equate this to zero, then my poles are going to be s is equal to zero, s is equal to minus one half and s is equal to one divided by four. And you can actually go through the analysis that we worked out to find out the asymptote angles, closed loop equation, repeated roots, and so on and so forth. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the MATLAB route. So at this point, what I want you to do is I want you to look at this transfer function. This transfer function is k divided by 2 s square plus s 4 s plus 1 expand this so 2 s so you will have 8 s cube 6 s square plus s plus 0 now this guy is the gain. So this needs to change. This is going to change. So when you use this inside the MATLAB, your numerator would be one and your denominator will be eight, six, one and zero. And then what we would do is we would use this command CISO tool to actually study and design the controller. So what I want to do is uh, I want to switch to MATLAB again. And then I just want to work out this example. And I would tell you that the results that you can get will be identical to the results that you will obtain by hand calculations. So if you just, I'm gonna share my screen. So what I want you to do is now I want you to go to num3 den3 8 6 1 0 then we have to create the transfer function tf3 is equal to tf num3 comma den and CISO tool TF3 and evaluate. Okay, everyone 
with me so far online students i just i just want to make sure that you have the same results as i do did you get these plots okay now the important point that i want you to observe is in the earlier two problems that we solved the poles never crossed the imaginary axis are you with me so far so this vertical line that you see on the plot so the second plot uh, right hand side topmost so the plot on the right hand side topmost plot you notice that initially the poles are this x x x can you see that one pole is at minus 0.5 do you agree with me the second pole is at minus 2.5 and the third pole is at zero do you agree with me those are the poles that we calculated now what i want you to do is i want you to observe that the root locus shows that for certain value of gain the poles cross the imaginary axis and the system becomes unstable are you with me so far and that is depicted in the step response can you see that initially that step response is kind of zero it's very close to 1 it's kind of zero and then all of a sudden that step response grows without bounds so the system becomes unstable this is the classic example of what you have is you have a, a loudspeaker you have a microphone and basically you increase the gain so that this internal loop that gets generated and the signal system response amplifies continues to amplify so same thing is happening here with the motor for certain values of gain k for certain values of gain k the response of the motor the response of the motor the amplitude of the motor is becoming infinite and clearly as you know that the motor amplitude does not become infinite in the sense that it just doesn't walk away what that means is basically that shaft starts spinning uncontrollable and to the point that you cannot control and it will those the speed of the shaft will continue to increase 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 to the point that either the bearing fails or maybe uh, the the fuse blows everyone understood this so that is what is happening now what i want you to do is we will repeat the same exercise so now here is something if you double click on c it would allow you to basically change these values uh interactive so basically what you can do is uh you can actually tune the value of gain uh is equal to 0 now you will see the c value has become zero and when c value or the external gain is zero your poles are coinciding with the poles of the open loop transfer function now what he is asking us he is asking us let's say look at this let's look at this problem and see what he is saying so first part it sketch the root locus for the system so on the right hand side top you have the root locus for the system then determine the value of k when the closed loop system has two equal poles now what i'm going to do is check this out i'm going to drag this pole from here and can you see that this is the point when 
two of my poles they overlap are you with me two of my poles initially i had three poles i increased the gain and what happened was one pole remained as is but the other two poles they overlap on top of each other and what is the value of gain when those two poles became equal to one another it is 0.048 are you with me that is the same answer that you get from your analytical calculations all these slides are uploaded on canvas so if you want i cannot show you the slides and matlab at the same time but if you want you are welcome to open the slides and then just try to track the example the way the example is worked out uh, just make sure that you understand what is going on the the next part is determine the range of k till uh, for which the closed loop system is stable can someone tell me how do i find out the range of k let's say if my value of k is equal to 0 okay bear with me if my value of k is equal to 0 do you agree agree with me that this is where i start do you agree in person students online students do you agree with me if my check this out here k value tunable block in preview left hand side bottom most block if my k value is equal to 0 do you see that that system is stable how do you see the system is stable because all the poles are on the left hand side of the imaginary axis you can also see in the step response that the step response is bounded it's not becoming unstable are you with me so far which means the system is stable now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna move these poles gradually increase the gain can you see the gain is increasing and then basically as you can see you can go all the way over here can you you see that at <coughs> a value of gain at 0.85 the system became unstable so i'm gonna try to get this down a little bit try to get it down a little bit and try to find the threshold value where the system response yeah so for threshold value of 0 0.54 uh, the system is still stable so as you can see uh, you would notice that you can find out the range and that is the range for the, the value of k when the system response is stable now you can do the exact same analysis from the root locus and you can actually try to tweak this a bit so basically maybe so what i'm going to do is just say 0 0.70 yeah 0 0.75 okay. yeah so for 0 0.75 can you see the system response is still bounded as soon as i do 0 0.76 can you see the system response became unbounded check this out again 0 0.75 enter this is the bounded response which means the system is stable now some of you may ask me even though we are giving a step step input why is system oscillating the system is oscillating because it's on the the imaginary axis the poles are on the imaginary axis that's why the system is oscillating as soon as you increase that gain by a teeny tiny amount those poles go on to the right half and the system becomes unstable i would encourage all the students in person and online 
to kind of repeat this exercise uh, so that you kind of get familiar with what's going on. Okay, everyone comfortable with this? Online students? Any questions, concerns, doubts? Okay, now I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm. I will shift to the the whiteboard. Okay. Now, what I want to do is, I want to take. So in the previous problem, what we did, we used root locus to investigate the stability of the system. So we tried to find out what, whether the system, the current system is stable or unstable. Then we looked at the values of gain K when the system becomes unstable. And then we looked at how the system behaves as we step through the gain values. We also looked at the, the step response of the system. Now this problem is actually a control problem. So in this particular problem, what we have is, we have these this system and this plant is given as S square minus 2s plus 2. So this plant is s square minus 2s plus 2. Now my question to you is, this is the first question. Is this system stable or unstable? So what I want to ask you is this system s square minus 2s plus two. Is this system stable or unstable? Can someone tell me whether this system is stable or unstable? And if you don't know whether the system is stable or unstable, just find the poles and uh, see whether the poles are on the left hand side of the the imaginary axis or on the right hand side of the imaginary axis the other option is just use the simulink program this uh, inside matlab then provide some type of input and then see what happens huh the system is unstable how did you find that out? Correct. The system is unstable. Everyone okay with me? 
comfortable. If you find the pole, you will see that the pole is going to be positive. So the pole has positive real parts. It means the system is unstable. Now we are given this unstable system. And what we want to do is we want to make this system stable. And we have maybe uh, three types of controllers. We have a proportional controller. We have a proportional plus derivative controller. And we have a proportional plus integral control. Now, what can we do? What type of control we need to choose so that the system is controlled? And we are not trying to be super strict. We are not specifying any performance specifications on this right now. I just want to control the system. And these are the three controllers that are given to us. Now, how do we, how do we actually come up with the controller design? So first and foremost, if you want to see if the system is stable or unstable, you can use the command root locus. You can use this command for root locus and plot the root locus. And you'll observe that the root locus would look something like this. If you have not uh, done it, I would strongly encourage you to quickly run this root locus and observe that the poles poles are on the right half plane. This is the imaginary axis. This is the real axis. And the system is going to be unstable all the time. The next part, what we want to do is, we want to actually come up with some type of a design that would actually help us uh, design the system. And what we can do is, let's, let's study this. Uh, let me see, there is, uh, okay. So let, let's see what we are gonna do. So first question is, so using, proportional control. If I use a proportional control, this proportional control would look something like this. S square to S plus two. So you have plus, you have minus. And what I want to do is, I want to change k and see if for certain values of k, my poles go on to the left-hand side of the imaginary axis. Are you with me so far? So this is the proportional control. Are you okay with this block diagram? Now, what I want to do, I want to find out for certain value of K, if I can change this value of K to such an extent that my poles go on to the left-hand side of the, the axis, left-hand side of the area, imaginary axis. This is exactly same as plotting the root locus. So what I would do is, I would go back to MATLAB again. I would go back to MATLAB again. And here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say num4, 
is equal to one, then four is equal to one minus two two transfer function four TF num four ten four and then what I would do is I would use CISO tool TF four. So today I am not gonna give you all a break. We will continue till uh, three o'clock and then we'll stop. I have another meeting to go to. So no break today. Sorry. But here we'll click. And then you will see the results. Okay. It may not look uh, very clean, but can you see the root locus? It's similar to the root locus that I showed you uh, on, the, uh, on the paper. Can you see that the root locus there? Now, I want to ask you this super simple question. If you increase value of, if you increase K, what would happen to those dots, uh, purple dots? Or no, magenta, right? Okay. So what would happen to those dots? Do you agree with me that those dots would travel on the line? Do you agree with me? But can you see that no matter how much I increase the value of K, that root locus is not going to go on the left-hand side of the imaginary axis. What I mean by that is if I increase this value of gain, so I'm going to show you here. This gain is nothing but, this gain is nothing but the proportional control. So even if I increase this proportional control, so I'm going to increase this proportional control. No matter how much I increase this proportional control, the system is not going to become stable. <coughs> Are you with me so far? Which means the proportional control is ineffective for this system. Are you with me so far? So the proportional control is ineffective for this particular system. Everyone understood this? No, there is another way of doing it. So I'll, I'll but I will give you a mathematical way of actually the, the back of the envelope calculation, but when you go to industry, you will always use MATLAB. Most of the times, when you are looking at control system analysis and design, MATLAB is the tool of choice. Now, why do I say that this system uh, is not controllable or cannot be controlled no matter what my proportional gain is? So for that, I want to work out this problem in a little bit detail, okay? And please understand because this is how the actual PID control is designed. And there is something else that is coming to you. On Thursday, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a motor. I'm going to give you uh, a motor controller, a uh, uh, motor driver. And I want you to actually perform PID control of an actual motor, uh, right? So basically coming up with a transfer function and all that stuff. And I will give you step-by-step -step, uh, uh, help on how to do it. But please understand this is how exactly the control is designed. So let's look at the, the system. So the system 
that we are trying to solve or trying to control with a proportional gain is this. This is 1 divided by s square minus 2s plus 2. plus minus now this is g of s this is h of s so i want to find out closed loop transfer function closed loop transfer function is g of s divided by 1 plus g of s h of s g of s is 1 divided by s square 2s plus 2 oh sorry that's why it is little difficult thank you for pointing that out I will share my screen and when I start sharing my screen, I have to wait because it is already a screen sharing in progress. Okay, fine. Okay, so this is what I want to do. So I have this transfer function, there is this gain and there is this feedback loop. Feedback is unity feedback. So what I do is. I use this gs divided by 1 plus gs hs and then here it would be 1 plus gs is 1 divided by s squared minus 2s plus 2 multiplied by 1. Since I'm going to multiply it with k this becomes k and basically here we're going to have a k and here we are going to have a k. So when I perform this calculation, when I perform this calculation, what happens is check this out. k divided by s square minus 2s plus 2 divided by s square minus 2s plus 2 plus k divided by s square minus 2s plus 2. Do you agree with me? This and this guy gets cancelled. So the, our closed loop transfer function looks like k divided by s square s square minus 2s plus 2 plus k. Are you with me so far? Now my question to you is, try to find out the poles of this system. You would observe, how do you find out the pole of this system? Basically using the equation minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4 ac 2 plus k divided by 2a Do you agree with me so i'm finding the roots of this equation so these this equation these are the roots of characteristics equation so you have two roots s1 and s2 can you see that whether my k is zero whether my k is uh, 100 whether my k is 1000 
the real part of the roots is always going to be positive. Are you with me so far? So no matter what I change, so no matter what I change, the value of K, whether it is zero, whether it is infinity, my, my poles are always going to have positive real parts, which means the conclusion here is the proportional control control does not work. That's a good question, and I was waiting for that. So the problem here is typically the gain is always positive. Typically, the gain is always positive. However, just imagine you come up with this uh, great idea, and somehow you manage that gain to be negative. Even though you manage that gain to be negative, check what happens. Your one root will be negative, but the other root will still be positive. So no matter what you do, the system is going to be unstable, which means the proportional control is not going to work. Everyone with me so far? So now what's next? So now we establish that the proportional control does not work. Now next question is, would that proportional plus derivative control work? Now what does it mean by proportional plus derivative? So just I just want to give you an idea. So basically it is like K P times E plus KD times E dot. So this is the controller equation. And the transfer function for the proportional uh, derivative control is remember this E, E dot, once you convert that into S domain, this will become kp e of s plus kd s e of s once we take the laplace transform so which means this is going to look like kp plus kd s e of s now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take kp i'm sorry i'm going to take uh, i'm going to take uh, kp outside so basically this will become like kp 1 plus kd by kp s and this is the short form of the controller that they want us to use so this is the controller can you see that this is the short form of the controller that they want us to use? So how do we solve, how do we attempt the, the proportional plus derivative control? So let me actually try this. So now, since our proportional control did not work, I want to use proportional. Plus derivative. So same argument, but here, what I have is I have K one plus S. And here we have 
this transfer function. plus minus you have to follow the same logic this is so my g of s is going to be k 1 plus s s square minus 2s plus 2 plus minus and I would actually find out again closed loop transfer function Which is g of s divided by one plus g of s h of s g of s is k one plus s s square minus two s plus two one plus g of s is k 1 plus s s square minus 2s plus 2 <clears throat> multiplied by 1. And now when you expand this, uh, I'm going to use the next the space here. When you expand this, you will have k 1 plus s and then it's going to be s square minus 2s plus 2 plus k 1 plus s. So this is going to be k 1 plus s divided by s square 2s so now i want you to understand very carefully what is happening here k minus 2 k minus 2 plus k plus 2 s are you with me so can someone tell me what magic happened just now remember this coefficient was negative and that was the root of all events can you see that this s the, was multiplied with minus 2 and that made that system unstable now here please observe that this k is saving the day so if my gain value, if my k value is equal to 2, then my poles are going to be on the imaginary axis. Are you with me so far? I will give you a minute to think about. So what this proportional plus derivative control do? Proportional plus derivative control change the transfer function. And what did it change in the transfer function? Basically, the term that was making that transfer function unstable, that gain modified that term. For example, that term will still be negative if value of k is 0. That uh, term will still be negative if the value of k is 1. But as soon as the value of k becomes 2, that term is gone, which means the system becomes stable. Are you with me so far? For k larger than 2, it will still be stable. So k is equal to 2 is the threshold. You need to have k is equal. If you use 
proportional plus derivative control. And if you set k value is equal to 2, your system would exhibit stable behavior. Are you with me so far? That's what it means. Now, <clears throat> please try to understand. This problem cannot be solved with root locus. Because now what you have actually this that there is actually there is a, a way to solve this. So let me let me uh, if you look at this problem, the one that I showed you here, like you have KP plus KD S E of S. If you assume the controller in this form, you cannot solve it with root locus. And I want to be absolutely clear. If you choose different gains for KP and KD, how many gains you have to tune? Two. You cannot use root locus technique if you have two gains. But now with writing the gain like this, writing the gain like this, what did it do? It basically helped me recast this problem as a root locus problem. So what, what did it do? So please try to understand. I'm going to rewrite this problem. So insert. I'm going to rewrite this problem, something like this. And this is the power of root locus. So I have this gain k. Then I have this transfer function. And this transfer function is 1 plus s divided by s square minus 2s plus 2. And now I have this feedback plus minus. Are you with me so far? So can you see that the way I have represented this transfer function is exactly same as this. But what has happened now is by casting the problem like this, casting the problem like this, now I can use, I can use root locus. Are you with me so far? So if I want to solve this problem with root locus, what would be my num? My numerator is going to be 1, 1. What would be my denominator? My denominator would be 1 minus 2, 2. And let's go on to MATLAB. But before I go to MATLAB, I want to ask my online student if this makes sense. Please understand, the problem is like design the proportional and derivative control. But if you were to look at the proportional control with its own KP and derivative control with its own KD, you cannot use root locus to solve this problem. But if you express proportional plus derivative control, something like this. Now what you have is, you just have one gain to tune, one value of k. And then this problem can be transformed into this form. And this is suitable to be solved using root locus technique. Yeah. Correct. You can certainly you can do that, but if that won't be root locus. So what? So if I understand you correctly, which means you can, if you want to find out KP and KD separately, you can certainly do that. But both KP and KDs would be populated in there. So you can't use the root locus. So you will have to do it manually. 
I mean, that is totally fine. But the technique, the point here is, can we use root locus for designing PID controls? The answer to that question is yes, but you will have to cast the controller, something like this. Okay, now I'm gonna go to uh, MATLAB. Everyone, please go to MATLAB. Okay, uh, go to MATLAB. Question, can you please go how you got the numerator and yes. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. So if you look at the transfer function, the transfer function is S plus one. And the denominator is S square minus two S plus two. So this is one. This is one. So they come here. This is one. This is minus two plus two, one minus two plus two. Does that answer your question, Mohammed? The only thing here is, please note, this k is a variable. You cannot include this in your transfer function. No, no, you cannot include this k in your transfer function. Transfer function should must uh, include just the numbers. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to do uh, num5 num5 is equal to 1 1 uh, then 5 is equal to 1 minus 2 2 and tf5 is equal to tf num5 den5 and ciso tool num5 den5 Online students, any questions? Just run this. Did I work today? Oh, yeah, I made a mistake. <laughs> this should be TF, TF, but it needs transfer function. Okay, now since we have this, remember what we talked about? When my C value, when my C value becomes two, okay, if my C value is zero, can you see the system is unstable? If you look at my C value is equal to one, system is unstable. As soon as, check this out, as soon as my C value is two, can you see the system response became bounded? Because now you can see the closed loop poles are on the imaginary axis. Online students, can you see that? Now, if I increase the value of C by a little bit, 2.2, .2, you will notice the system response would decay down. It means the system 
would become more and more stable. Can you see that in the step response, you got this decaying response. Now your poles are inside the, the on the left-hand side of the root locus. Everyone with me so far? Any questions? Questions from online students, how to use root locus for uh, proportional control design and proportional and derivative control design. Now, next part is let's see how would this change if I were to use the proportional and integral control. So, how would this change if I use proportional and integral control? So, Question. Yeah, you can copy and run. So I'm going to wait for a minute just to make sure that everyone got the same results as I did. Everyone got the same results? Online students? In person students? You got the same results? You have a problem in MATLAB? What happened with your MATLAB? Okay, now the last part is online students, you got the same results. Okay, yeah, can you show? I, I will show you the code uh, here. Yeah, here, just, just highlight this code and then right click evaluate section in command window. Okay, now, so the next question is, how do we, let me share, how we do it with proportional and integral control. 
so now the proportional let's let me talk about proportional and integral control so So, if we have a proportional integral control, so it is like KP, E, KI integral of E dt. So if you want to write the transfer function, it's gonna look like Kp E of S, Ki E of S, integral is one over S. So this is going to be the form of the controller. So what I'm gonna do is, just like the previous case, I'm going to take KP outside and this will become KI divided by KP. Uh, this will become 1 over S. Assuming this guy, this ratio is 1, this can be written as 1 plus 1 divided by s. So if I want to solve the same problem with the root locus technique, k this is going to be 1 plus 1 over s, 1 s square minus 2 s plus 2. Plus minus. And this can be written as, so if you see this will become s plus 1 divided by s cube minus 2s square plus 2s. So now you got this system and we will follow the exact same technique. I'm going to go to MATLAB. So I will go down, say num. Six is equal to one, one, then six is equal to one minus two, two, zero, TF six is equal to TF num 6 10 6 CISO tool TF 6 
Now, as you can see, the, the thing that we noted in P control, same thing is happening here. No matter how much gain you increase, the system poles would never ever go back on to the left hand side of this plane. So, so let me share my screen. Just a second. So as you can see that no matter what I do, no matter how much I increase, the system would never become stable. And that is one consequence of using proportional and integral control. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and I will continue the discussion on Thursday. So we'll stop here today and we will continue the discussion again on Thursday. And uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to send me an email and I will give you your next assignment. No assignment today. I will give you your next assignment on Thursday. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you.